Ben.
And this second one was what an older version of OpenSSL produced as a result. So you had a bug where this uh, mathematical function in a very rare corner case produced a wrong result. And uh, I found quite a couple of these kinds of bugs with this strategy. Um, yeah, this is the patch where this was introduced. Um, it's some assembly. I have no idea what it does. Um, um, and now um, another tool that is very good to combine with fuzzing is address sanitizer. And this is really something I, I'm currently running around and trying to tell free software developers that they make use of this tool because it's really, really simple. And it, it, um, it can so sometimes quite easily find bugs. So um, address sanitizer is a feature in the compiler. It's available both in GCC and CLang, and it can be enabled with this flag uh, minus F sanitize address. Um, so if you only want to take one thing away from this talk, if you write software in C, then use this flag to test your software. Um, now here's a little code example. Um, so we're allocating a buffer and then just writing zeros into it and then we're freeing the buffer and then we're trying to read from the buffer. So it's a use after free bug. Uh, kind of standard use after free bug. You're freeing a buffer and then still trying to read from it. And this is, I mean, this is a very simple example, but this is usually the kind of bug you have in applications like browsers these days when you have security issues. Now, uh, um, here I have this code. And now if I compile it, Ah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, what happens if I run this is, um, is essentially unpredictable. So in, in this case, I have a zero, and this will also usually happen because we're not doing anything between the freeing and the reading of it. Um, but uh, we, we cannot rely that the compiler will do anything predictable in this situation. Um, now, if we add address sanitizer to it, and also I add G, which just gives us some debugging information, then, and I have to do this, uh, um, then, hmm? Control L? Okay, repeat. Um, then we get a very nice error message. It says uh, heap use after free. Um, it tells us in which line in the code it happened. And it tells us, okay, this is in some memory region that was freed in this line and it was allocated in this line. So we get a lot of information that will help us to analyze this bug. Um, and uh, the thing is with use after free, uh, most of the time, these bugs don't crash your application. Also, if you have uh, out-of-bounds memory reads, they also usually just your application continues running and something strange may have happened. And um, so uh, it's hard to find these bugs without such a tool. So address sanitizer is very helpful that it allows you to find these kinds of bugs. Yeah, this is again the error message. Um, and uh, it's uh, maybe maybe you know wall grind, which does similar things, but um, wall grind uh, is quite limited because it works on, on the already compiled executable, and some classes of bugs cannot be found with that strategy. So it's a bit like address sanitizer is a more advanced version of wall grind, and it's also much faster uh, because it operates at compile time. Um, so yeah, and what you ideally want to do is you're combining fuzzing with address sanitizer because then you will just find more bugs and find these subtle bugs that are otherwise very hard to find. Um, you probably all remember this one, the heartbleed bug, which was uh, essentially an out of bounds read bug. You had some buffer and, and a length, and if you gave a server a, a length that was longer than this buffer, it would just read that and send it back to the user. Um, and 
I did a little experiment with that. I created a small tool that was doing a handshake with OpenSSL with itself and then added the possibility that you could just swap out one of the TLS packages with something you gave it on the command line. And by that, I was able to fuss the handshake of OpenSSL. And then using that with an older version that was vulnerable to Heartbleed, um, after a couple of hours, it rediscovered the Heartbleed bug. Now you can say, okay, it's... Uh, it's easy to find a bug if you already know where it is. But uh, I, I would argue that in this experiment, I didn't use any information that was very specific to Heartbleed. It was just a handshake. It was uh, just a normal fuzzing how I would have done it uh, otherwise if, yeah. Um, I took it six hours. Um, and another tool called LibFuzzer, which uh, I will also talk about later uh, a bit more, uh, the developer of LibFuzzer wrote me then an email and said he has replicated this experiment with LibFuzzer and it only took it five minutes. So, yeah. Uh, um, um, then uh, w something else I tried was uh, I asked, okay, uh, if you have address sanitizer and it finds all these bugs, uh, can you compile a whole system with address sanitizer enabled? So usually you use it for testing for one application, but if you compile a whole system, um, okay, may, that may, may find some more subtle bugs. And um, I uh, created a Gen2 system where everything except some core packages was compiled with address sanitizer. So uh, for uh, you have some problems if you want to compile glibc with it because what essentially it is doing is it is intercepting the memory allocation functions of glibc and if you use it with glibc with it then you will get some weird dependency conflicts uh, and gcc also didn't work uh, uh, because it it's compiling these these base functions that it adds in executables so i had to exclude those and a few more core dependencies but the rest of the system everything was compiled with address sanitizer um, it is slow and it takes a lot of memory but it is possible to run um, um, yeah, and uh, what was to be expected is that just by doing this, I found a lot of bugs in a lot of packages. And I have a list here. I, I, I made it a bit longer this morning, <laughs> the stuff I found recently. Uh, so you see a lot of stuff that like bash uh, or Python or syslog. Uh, and also uh, things where you say, okay, maybe this is security critical, like the Pigeon OTR plugin. There was a use after free just by using it. So no fuzzing involved or anything, just starting it. And uh, if you opened a certain dialog, it would crash with the use after free bug. Was fixed in the last version. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think this was quite worth it. Uh, it led to a lot of bug fixes and yeah. Um, there were some challenges with it. So um, the one thing with address sanitizer is you can you can use a, an, an executable with address sanitizer with a normal library that's not using address sanitizer. But if you do it the other way around, it does not work. So if you have a library, like let's say you compile your system OpenSSL with address sanitizer, then uh, all the binaries that are not compiled with address sanitizer will stop working. So if you're recompiling your system with address sanitizer, you have to check in which order you do it uh, that nothing that breaks. And you also cannot easily just include exclude one package. Uh, if you want to exclude something, you also have to exclude all the dependencies. Um, then there were some build system issues. One was with libtool that when libtool is compiling a library, then it filters out all compiler flags that it doesn't know about. Uh, and uh, it didn't know about address sanitizer, so that broke. Um, it's now fixed in the Git code of libtool, but they have not made a new release yet. And then, uh, and if you have some custom memory allocation in an application, that usually also doesn't work. Um, yeah. 
Um, then uh, warning in past talks uh, I had about this, I said, okay, maybe this is something you may want to use if you want to have a very secure system, but this is probably not a good idea because uh, address sanitizer was designed as a testing tool and not as a production tool. And this introduced some problems. And uh, uh, someone on the OSS security list uh, showed a way where how you could use uh, address sanitizer to become root if you have a suit executable compiled with address sanitizer. So this introduces security issues. So uh, at least in the way it's currently working, it is not usable practically as a as a production protection mechanism. So it's a good testing tool, but it's not something you want to run in the real world. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, it works. Um, I had, have a server running with it where I can serve web pages and yeah, found a lot of bugs with it. I still have a, a large number of log files of uh, bugs uh, from that, that I have not, uh, I have not reported yet. I haven't gone through yet. Um, I probably somehow have to crowdsource that because there are so many of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if you uh, are involved in any free software project, please, please just uh, compile it with address sanitizer once and run the test suite and see if something turns up, pops up with that. Um, Okay, um, some other tools that are worth mentioning. Um, Libfuzzer, I already mentioned earlier, is uh, it works similar than American Fuzzy Lob, but it, it it works on the function level. So it's not calling an application, it's calling a function. So you're writing a, a wrapper function that takes a, a, a buffer and a length, and then you feed that into the whatever function you want to test. Um, the advantage of that is, uh, first of all, it's it's targeting different things, like it's a function and not a software, uh, and it's it's much faster than AFL because AFL has to like fork a new process for every tested input, and this just is running in one process, so it it's much faster. Um, but it it's a bit tricky to use because you have to be very careful that you're not, for example, that you're not leaking any memory inside your test function because. Uh, uh, then just the the memory of the process will grow till it's too much because it's executing this function millions of times, um, and so it, it's not as straightforward to use. But it's also a very useful tool, especially if you integrate that in the development process of a software. I think then it's a very powerful tool, and it's uh, part of LLVM. So yeah. Um, then there's uh, Kazan, which is. Uh, like address sanitizer in the Linux kernel, and this is just an option you can in make menu config under debugging. You can just enable that. And uh, yeah, when I tried this the first time, then I immediately got some warnings that my graphics driver was accessing some invalid memory. Um, so yeah, it's probably not not used as often as it should be. Um, and um, there's now also a tool called syscaller, which is um, adapting a strategy similar what libfuzzer and AFL are using with this coverage-based fuzzing to the kernel with syscall fuzzing. And I'm also aware that there are people trying to fuzz other kernel inputs with similar strategies. Um, yeah. So um then there are other sanitizer features in the compilers so one is ubsun which um detects undefined behavior so maybe you know that in c there are some things like uh, if you have a signed integer overflow or if you have a shift left by a negative value uh, these things uh, the standard says that they are undefined so uh, you cannot rely that they do anything predictable and uh, ubsun finds these things uh, a bit of a problem with that is that there are so many of these uh, bugs and usually they don't do anything bad because most of the time the compiler will just do what you expect it to do like an integer overflow will just okay if you have int max plus one it gives int min that usually happens but you cannot rely on it um so um yeah and there's also a thread sanitizer and memory sanitizer, but these are a bit more tricky to use. So the really nice thing with address sanitizer is that it's just you enable it and it usually just works. So, um, yeah. 
Um, and there's some work done to, to adapt AFL to networking because the, the standard AFL is just testing file inputs. So you have uh, executable and give it some file and yeah, uh, there's a patch for it to, to let it fast TCP inputs. Um, and there's also a, another attempt where you're using a preload library that will, uh, take something from standard in and feed it into a TCP port. Uh, but these things are quite brittle and uh, it's not as straightforward to use. So you have to play around with it a bit. And uh, there is certainly room for improvement here. So um, yeah, and th there's a port of American Fuzzy Lob to Android. I have not tested this myself, but um, yeah, uh, if you know about Android security, um, it's probably a good thing. It is needed. <laughs> they should uh, fast test their stuff. Um, and what's interesting is, like I mentioned earlier, that some of the stage fright bugs were found with AFL. And what happened there is that the guy who found them ported a stage fright library uh, to standard Linux so he could fuzz it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, as a at the end, I want to ask you, like, who, who is uh, involved in some kind of C development or C plus plus development? Please hands up. That's yeah, maybe a third. Um, and uh, are you already using fuzzing, or are you using address sanitizer, or and uh, who is not using both fuzzing and address sanitizer? from the people who just... Okay, so now you know what you have to do next. <laughs> um, it will improve your software quality, definitely. Yeah, um, thanks for listening. Um, yeah, and I'm, I think we have time for questions. Ah, you keep the microphone door. Right, so my first question would be like, what what is your attitude to static code analysis, maybe model checking? Um, static code analysis. Uh, okay, it's uh, actually I I have not used it a whole lot, and um, my impression was that it will usually not find the most interesting bugs, but. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with it, so maybe I'm wrong on that. Yeah. No more questions? Then, oh, yes. Um, how did you find the lip OTR? No, the the pigeon OTR plugin. Did you did, do you really click on the UI or? Yes, I just I had the Gentoo system built with address sanitizer, and then I started the pigeon and started a chat session. And so the bug happened when you tried to authenticate your the other contact. Okay. Um, and uh, another interesting thing about that one is it was already reported six months earlier in their bug tracker, but it was ignored. So, but <laughs> this also shows up that um, your your fuzzing project or your uh, your initiative mainly uh, targets uh, file input systems or the the attack surface is is file input. Um, but there's a whole whole lot going yeah. on from user input or on embedded systems where you can't yeah. do this file stuff thingy. Yeah, so I mean the the pigeon bug was uh, there was no fuzzing involved. It was just uh, yeah. I, I mean I talked about these two tools AFL and address sanitizer and this was just address sanitizer. So this is just uh, use this to compile your software and test it with it. Um, but there was also, but uh, the uh, developers from LibreOffice, they did something where they emulated uh, the clicks on their GUI by, uh, based on an input and used that for fuzzing, which is also quite interesting approach.
Yeah, I think the, the the file input should be extended to all user input, not only yeah, definitely. mouse, and, but the, recognize the, text yeah. fields and, and fill them in because almost no user interface today uses uh, only file input. Yeah, I mean, but it's certain just class since files of, is the easiest thing to yes, do. Yes, yes, it's the low hanging fruit yeah. for start. Uh, what kind of information do you need to provide to AFL about the structure of files? Uh, that uh, need to be nothing. Processed? You give it a, a an example file, and the rest it does by itself. Okay. <laughs> okay. If there are no more questions, then. Yeah, thanks for listening.